Hey, Shane. Your wedding ceremony's over now, right? What time do you think you'll get home? Hello? What the hell? You do know it's my wedding night. Could be a little more considerate. Oh, wow, don't be so mean. What do you want? Like I just asked you, your wedding's over now, right? Well, yeah, it is. So, what time are you going to get home? By home, do you mean my parents' place? <laughs> Duh, obviously. <laughs> I won't be going back to my parents' place anymore. Huh? Or rather, I'll go back for things like birthdays and New Year or any other time I have a particular reason to. But starting from today, I'll be living with my wife Zoe in our new house. Uh, what? Is it really that surprising? When two people get married, unless one moves into the other's family home, they get a new place together, right? Uh, I mean, I guess so. You make a good point. Where do you live now, then? Hmm, I think we're about 50 minutes from my folks' place by car now. The new house is about halfway between my work and Zoe's parents' place. Oh, that makes sense. It's because you're close to your wife's parents' house, then. I guess that makes sense. She is the daughter of a company CEO, after all, right? It never dawned on me before, but thinking about it now, I guess this was always a possibility. Hmm, I see. Um, what? Huh? Is there something wrong with me moving out of my parents' place? I just got married for Pete's sake. Well, think about it. We always lived across the street from each other until now. The kind of distance we could always go to each other's houses when we felt like it. Now, we won't be able to meet unless we schedule beforehand. I guess you're right. We live pretty far apart, huh? Sorry, but I gotta go. Zoe's calling me from the living room. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll message you again soon. Hey, Shane. When will you guys be going on your honeymoon? What the? Where did that come from all of a sudden? You already decided on a date, right? We're planning on going six months from now. It's still in the preparation phase. Wow, that's a surprisingly long time away. We both have to plan around our work schedules. If your wife's the daughter of a CEO, she must have a lot of money. I bet you're going abroad, right? <laughs> right? Well, since you mention it, we are considering Mexico. Oh, I knew it! I plan on covering the expenses myself, though. Oh, really? Actually, fair enough. I suppose it would be kind of rude to go freeloading off the in-laws when you've barely been married five minutes. <laughs> anyway, Tanya, what exactly does any of this have to do with you? Surely that goes without saying. I'm gonna be coming along for your honeymoon, after all. What? Is it really that surprising? Of course it is! What the hell are you talking about? Do you know what honeymoon means? This holiday is for me and Zoe. If you're struggling, the definition is, quote, a holiday spent together by a newly married couple. Couple! Why in God's name would we take you with us? Huh? You mean I can't come? Obviously! Wow, what the hell? I just got my passport renewed for this. You did what? Oh, wait a sec. By any chance, is Zoe next to you right now? Yeah, she is. Why? Ah, uh, I see. Say no more. I understand. You understand what exactly? I mean, I understand the situation. It's okay, you don't have to say anything else. See ya! I have no idea what's going on! Hey there, Shane! So guess where I am right now? I'm in the airport! Your mom told me what day you'd be departing. Oh, thank God she replied. But Shane, what am I going to do with you? I always knew you could be a bit of an airhead sometimes, but to think you'd forget to tell me what day we were leaving for our honeymoon. <laughs> you silly Billy. You have to be more careful from now on. Okay, sweetie. I mean, it is true we were never going to be able to travel together. 
<sighs> I guess you probably couldn't get away for long enough to send me a message, right? Oh, come to think of it, it makes sense that you didn't, so I understand. Actually, it's fine. Don't sweat it. Let's meet up after we both arrive at Mexico City Airport, okay? I'm boarding the plane soon, so I gotta switch my phone off now. Be careful not to get found out by Zoe. See you on the other side, my sweet honey pumpkin. What. The. Hell. Tanya? You're in Mexico City Airport? What? Tell me this is a joke. Tanya! No way. You're not actually trying to come with us on our honeymoon, are you? <coughs> My messages aren't even marked as red. Did you already switch your phone off? This isn't good, Tanya! Shane, sweetie pie, I just landed at Mexico City Airport! Woohoo! I'm in Mexico! This is my first time ever going abroad. When can you meet me, Shane? Don't worry, I understand if she's watching you. I'm having a coffee in a cafe at the airport right now. Let me know as soon as you can, okay? My precious sugar dumpling. Tanya! Where the heck are you? <laughs> Shane, baby. I already told you I'm waiting for you in Mexico City Airport. Holy mother of God. You actually went and did it. For real, you actually got on a plane and flew to Mexico, didn't you? Well, duh. Anyway, where are you, Boo Boo Bear? When do you think you'll be able to give her the slip and meet me? Meet you? <laughs> That's obviously not gonna be happening. Um, <laughs> what? Oh, no way. Did Zoe find out about us? Find out about us? What is there to find out? I showed Zoe all the messages you've been sending me. She knows everything and has done so this whole time. What? You started bombarding me with even more messages than before as soon as me and her got married. So out of consideration for her, I showed her everything. She's my wife, and I didn't want her to worry. Huh? Wait a second. You showed her? What have you done? Does this mean she already knows about our relationship? Our relationship? You're just a childhood friend who grew up in the same neighborhood as me. What exactly is there for her to know about? Huh? Wait, but, but we might have started out as childhood friends, but our relationship blossomed into a flourishing romance and, and we became lovers and, and soulmates. What? We started dating two years ago when you came home after all that time away, when I confessed my eternal love for you? No, no, no. Come on, Tanya, that confession. You know I rejected you, don't you? What? I told you I was already dating someone. Uh, yeah, you did, but you meant me, right? What the heck? That doesn't even make sense! No! Huh? I was dating Alice, my old co-worker at the time. I didn't explain the situation in explicit detail because you didn't know her. But she was the reason I ended up going to a university so far away from home. I didn't want me and her to lose contact, so I picked the same one as her. We broke up eventually, then after that, I finally met Zoe. Anyway, the crucial point here is that me and you have never dated, Tanya. I don't understand what could have possibly given you the idea we ever did. No. This can't be. You probably won't think of it as proof of my non-interest. But do you remember how after you confessed to me, I didn't message you a single time? In spite of that, you messaged me constantly, like a woman possessed. I was actually impressed at the mental strength it must have taken to continue messaging someone who turned you down like that. Totally undaunted. I wouldn't have imagined in a million years you were in the grips of a misunderstanding of such epic proportions. What is this? This can't be happening. Besides, how do you rationalize me marrying Zoe if me and you were dating? If we really were lovers and soulmates, do you think I'd make a great A scumbag move of cheating on you? And not only that, but marrying her too? 
Surely that would make me the most despicable guy on the planet! Not once, not even for a second, have I ever had any intention of doing something so dishonest! Well, isn't it obvious? Zoe is the daughter of a CEO, right? Which means you're set to become CEO one day! And if you did, you'd be in a situation to provide for and look after me forever. I thought you married into riches for my sake, so me and you could be happy without ever having to worry about money again. You thought what? Lord, give me strength. I didn't marry Zoe because she's the daughter of a CEO, you know. Really? Anyway, what makes you think I'm going to be the CEO one day in the first place? Huh? Well, because Zoe's the CEO's daughter, of course. Zoe's little brother is going to be taking over her dad's company. What? I found out she was the daughter of a CEO after we started dating. That's not what drew me to her. And to be honest, I wouldn't care if she wasn't. Plus, the company I work for has no relation to her dad's company whatsoever. Uh, what? Besides, Zoe's motto is, a penny saved is a penny earned. She's the most down-to-earth, frugal person I know. It's true she was raised in an affluent household, but in spite of that, her parents made a point of not spoiling her excessively while bringing her up. Being fully aware of that, I have no intention of freeloading off of her parents. I have no interest in their money, and of course, Zoe feels the same. I can't believe it. I was so sure. I, I, I was convinced the only reason you were dating her was because she was the daughter of a CEO. You jumped to so many illogical conclusions. Anyway, this kind of begs the question, doesn't it? It would appear my childhood friend of over 20 years thinks of me as nothing more than a cold, calculating, scheming con man. Um... To be honest, that's probably the most shocking thing about all this. No, I... To return to the subject, you're at Mexico City Airport now, right? Basically, you flew to Mexico. Yes, I am. Listen, Shane, please. I understand everything you told me about Zoe, but at the very least, will you please, please, please come and meet me? Impossible. Why? It's physically impossible. Me and Zoe are in Arizona right now. What? But you said you were going on honeymoon to Mexico. There was a change of plan. A change of plan? Neither of us were able to take enough time out of our work schedules to make the honeymoon as long as we wanted. We thought it'd be a little selfish for us to leave the state while our companies needed us so badly. In the end, we decided to do a tour of the Grand Canyon instead. We're staying at a hotel on the outskirts right now. What? You've got to be kidding me. What am I supposed to do now? I don't even have a hotel booked for tonight. And what am I going to do with all these bags of rose petals I was going to sprinkle on our bed? What? You went abroad and you didn't even book a hotel? Rose petals? I thought you would have booked one for us already! Oh wow, you really are something else. They might speak English in Mexico, but it's still really difficult for me to get on by my own here. I don't know what to do or where to go. Maybe so, but what do you expect me to do? You know I clearly refused your offer of coming along with me and my wife on our honeymoon, so you shouldn't really be there in the first place, should you? I hate to say it, but you only have yourself to blame. Oh! Hey, Zoe just called my mom. Huh? She did? Apparently the date for what you thought was the day of our departure for the honeymoon in Mexico was actually the time we departed for the Grand Canyon. No way. My mom said she's going to call your mom and explain the situation. No, no, wait. Don't do that, please. Why not? Zoe's trying to help you out here. But, but... I told my mom I was going on holiday with a friend. This isn't the time to be worrying about something like that. But... Zoe thinks you should try calling the American Embassy in Mexico and explaining the ridiculous mess you got yourself into. There's a chance they might be able to help you. Huh? I'm sorry, but that's the only advice that we can give you. Uh huh? We're praying for your safe return to the States. Good luck! I heard that even after more shenanigans, 
Tanya did somehow or other manage to make it back to America at the end. However, after reaching her emotional and psychological limit, she ended up going off with some sleazy pickup artist guy who approached her at the airport. Apparently, they went for a few drinks at a nearby bar and had a one-night stand at a hotel. After returning home to America, the two of them continued dating on a long-distance basis. She fell head over heels for him, and after six months, flew over to his country. Unfortunately for her, after realizing the address the guy gave her for the place the two of them were supposed to be staying at was fake, once again, she went home in tears. Tanya's parents, who had finally reached their wit's end with their daughter's behavior, officially banned her from traveling within or outside of America. She quit her job, and I heard that now she's a full-blown neat, who does nothing but sit at home playing romance games and complaining about her disillusionment with love. Hey sis, you finished moving yet? Mom and dad are with me and we're planning to head back soon. Hope you're out of there by the time we return. I'm leaving now. Just a few unpacking left. What, you're still there? Come on, hurry up. We deliberately went on this trip, thinking you'd be gone before we came back. It's been three days already. Are you stalling for some souvenir or something before you finally leave? No, I'm not. Frankly, I don't even consider myself a part of this family anymore. It's quite apparent how you feel about me, planning a trip precisely when I'm moving out. You blame us? We know exactly the kind of person you are. If we were there helping you move, you'd expect us to do everything, wouldn't you? Sorry, but we'd rather not be associated with a criminal. We don't accept criminals as part of our family. Seriously? You're still harping on that? I've explained everything already. I just helped someone on the street, and anyone in my situation would have done the same. Why won't any of you believe me? Oh, you're still trying to use that excuse. As if anyone would buy into such a far-fetched story. It's just too coincidental that while you were escorting that old lady, $10,000 mysteriously vanished from her purse. It's not a very convincing tale, if you ask me. If you're going to lie, at least come up with something more believable. It's the truth, Rosa. I didn't steal that money. There's no way I would rob an old lady. I was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time. She's overly suspicious of everyone because she was previously robbed. Naturally, she'd point fingers at a stranger who offered help. But none of you seem to care about what I say or defend me. Do you know how hurtful that is? I'm your family for crying out loud. The reason everyone, including the old lady, suspects you is because you are the one responsible. No one wants to defend a criminal, and frankly, at this point, no one believes a word you say. So why not just own up to your actions and tell the truth? Maybe if you apologize, we might consider forgiving you. How many times do I have to say it? I didn't do it. Why won't any of you believe me? This is beyond ridiculous. It's not about believing you, but rather your actions speak for themselves. Remember back in middle school when you were a delinquent, smoking and causing trouble? Or how you got rejected from college and never had the motivation to try again? Your history is filled with letting people down and being an utter failure. None of that has anything to do with what we're discussing right now. Instead of standing up for a family member in need, you choose to kick me out? That's not how a family should treat each other. I thought you'd always have my back. We've known each other our whole lives. It's high time you stop blaming others and start recognizing your own shortcomings. You're playing the victim card, saying we won't stand up for you. But perhaps you are so untrustworthy that even your own family doesn't want to defend you? I've had enough of this. I get it. Everyone seems determined to believe that I am some kind of criminal. Fine. I'll leave today and I want nothing to do with any of you from now on. Is that what you all want? Oh, really? That's quite all right with us. You know, if you just confessed and apologized, we would have considered letting you come back home. It's not too late to admit that you're a liar. People who label their family members as criminals aren't family to me, especially when there's no evidence to prove it. 
After today, I'm no longer part of this so-called family. You can let mom and dad know that too. They've hurt me the most. Oh, don't worry. I'll be sure to pass along your message. Honestly, it works out well for us since having a criminal in the family is not a good look. You know the neighbors would judge us. We don't need that kind of negativity in our lives. They probably would, given our nosy neighbors. I'm cutting ties with this toxic family, and I couldn't be happier about it. I don't want to be associated with people who care so much about what others think. Well, we don't want to be associated with you either. There's not one redeeming quality about you. While I'm pursuing my education, you're wasting your life playing video games. It's embarrassing to have you as a sister. I'd rather have someone with a strong work ethic and determination. My choice of job has nothing to do with you. I won't judge what you want to do. Yeah, but it gets on my nerves. It's frustrating to have a sister who couldn't get into college, can't hold down a job and spends all her time in her room playing games. I mean, literally every time I look in your room, you're playing games. It's like you have no other purpose in life. So what? I enjoy playing games. I cover my expenses and my free time is mine to enjoy. Why don't you mind your own business? No, you don't understand. Your actions affect me too. The neighbors keep asking about you whenever they talk to me. They wonder why they haven't seen you and if you're happy with your work. Sounds like they just love gossiping. You don't have to entertain them. If it bothers you that much, stop talking to them. And the reason they ask such things is that you always have something negative to say about me. Obviously, that becomes the main topic of conversation. Well, it's true. You really are a good for nothing. Think about how it affects mom and dad, having a failed daughter depending on them for so long. They worry about how long this will last. I've told them countless times that I have a job, but they never seem to believe me. Honestly, if you're annoyed by being questioned, then stop spreading rumors. Or you could just get your act together and start making something of your life. Don't put your faults on others. You love blaming everyone else. Maybe you need therapy before everyone starts hating you. No matter what I say, I won't get anywhere with you. I'm not causing you any harm, so back off. You're causing me a lot of harm. You being a shut-in affects the whole family. It's inconsiderate to both mom and dad. Do you want everyone to hate you? Just get your act together and maybe people will like you more. I don't exist to please everyone and make them like me. I pay my bills, right? Yet you still claim I don't have a job. How could I pay my bills without one? Don't act like it's something special. You're an adult. You're supposed to pay your bills. I'll soon finish college and secure a well-paying job in a big corporation. Unlike you, I have goals. Cool. Do whatever you want. Why should I care? It's not like I couldn't have gotten a job like that if I wanted to. Yep. Lie as much as you can. A shut-in like you could never get a decent job. Don't pretend you had a choice. You're still at home, right? I hope you're not stealing things while we're away. I don't want any of your stuff around me. I don't need unpleasant reminders. I'm checking to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. I don't want to have to come back here a second time. Okay, fine with me. Please check every corner. We don't want a criminal coming back after we've worked hard to get you to leave. I don't want to see your faces either. I'm checking everywhere possible. And I won't be sharing my new address with any of you. Don't try to find me. Trust me. No one's interested in where you go after you leave. Just how delusional are you? We had enough of you the moment you became a criminal. Mom and Dad only have eyes for me now. They don't waste their attention on you. That's nothing new. You've always been their favorite. I've stopped caring about it long ago. But this time, I thought maybe my family would have my back. Even though I knew what kind of people you all are. I hoped just this once. This is the last time you can lash out against us. 
Mom and Dad have never considered you a good person. They're a bit afraid of what you're capable of. Anyway, you have to leave. We'll be home in two hours, and we don't want to see you there. Give me 15 minutes, and I'll be out of here. Anyway, it's not a big deal for me to leave. The house hasn't felt the same since we remodeled it last year. I'm not that attached to it. Where are you going next? You have no money, so I'm guessing some rundown apartment. Good luck finally striking out on your own. It's about time. But don't come back crying about how much you regret what happened. Hey, sis, it's been a while. How have you been? We're planning to have dinner tonight, and we'd love for you to join us, and we'd absolutely love it if you could join us. It's our treat, of course. Seriously, what's going on? Weren't you content when I made it clear that I want nothing to do with you? Now out of the blue, you're messaging me, asking me to join your dinner. It's absurd. Why would I have a change of heart now? Please don't take it so negatively. We are still family, and having dinner together would be a wonderful opportunity to catch up. Mom and Dad are genuinely excited to see you. Can you make an exception this time? You have the audacity to call me family after all the hurtful things that were said. Criminals aren't considered family, remember? I must apologize for that remark. It was wrong of me. I know you were falsely accused and you went to great lengths to find the real culprit. You proved yourself to be incredibly competent, even more than I had ever thought. What else could I have done? You have no idea what it feels like when everyone looks down on you for something you didn't do. I had to clear my name, even if I had to do it on my own. Even if you now believe in my innocence, I can't go back to a family that drove me away in such a manner. So please, just continue staying out of my life. Please don't be so harsh. We are genuinely sorry for everything that happened. You can't make it to dinner tonight? Can't we mend things between us just this once? It's been so long since we had a proper conversation. I'm sorry, but it's not just about tonight. I won't be available tomorrow or the day after either. I need time for myself, and I can't afford to waste any minute on you guys. I need you to respect my decision and never contact me again. Wait, don't go so quickly. Fine, I'll stop bothering you about dinner. But let me tell you why I reached out to you. We're facing some difficulties and we could really use your help. By the way, I've heard some amazing things about your career. How much do you earn? Is it a substantial amount? I had a feeling this was coming. My earnings are personal, and I don't intend to share them with you. If you need money, ask someone else. I heard it from some friends who are huge fans of yours. I can't believe I didn't know it was you all along. I thought you were just at home playing games, but you're actually a famous streamer. That's truly impressive. And now you're suddenly impressed? After all the times you mocked and belittled what I do? I'll admit I made a huge mistake. Having a super famous streamer as a sister is something to be proud of. You're even ranked eight among the top earners, right? Do you know how much those in the top 10 earn? It's incredible. You seem quite enthusiastic about this, but I can't help but wonder about your intentions. I've already cut ties with you. It doesn't matter to you whether I earn a substantial amount or not. Huh? I said I was sorry for what happened in the past. Now that we know the kind of person you truly are, Mom, Dad, and I all sincerely want to bring you back into the family fold. You've earned our respect, and we genuinely want to take care of you. Please consider coming back home. Firstly, I have no desire to return home. Secondly, I was dead serious about severing ties. Leaving home was the best decision I ever made. And I now live in a comfortable high-rise apartment, free from criticism and judgment. Wait, we really need you back. It's an urgent situation. Huh? You need my help now? Weren't you relieved to get rid of me before? The family is facing some serious difficulties and... I know what's going on. Let's start with the living expenses, which are already a burden. However, the major concern is the huge loan from last year's remodeling. On top of that, there's the loan for the car. And let's not forget your college tuition. 
Do you expect me to foot all those bills? Your gaming, shut-in, so-called good-for-nothing sister. Oh my god! You didn't think it was worth mentioning when you were thrown out. Mom and Dad thought you'd continue paying. No way! I won't be giving money to people who kicked me out of my own home. Sure, Dad's pay cuts were manageable, and I did contribute a little. But it's not my responsibility. I don't even live there anymore. And it was never my duty to cover your expenses. I'm sorry. We really need your help, sis. We can't pay the bills and they've taken away the car. Can you imagine how difficult it is? That's not good. If you can't afford the car, it's hard to imagine you can keep up with the house payments. I'm guessing you'll end up selling it. And as for your dreams of graduating, it looks like they're slipping away. Please, take this seriously. If we lose the house, we'll have nowhere to go. We have no savings left. Please, just help us avoid selling it. I know we were cruel to you, but this is a dire situation. I'm sorry, but I can't assist you with this. It's your house, your problem. You'll have to manage with Dad's earnings. Cut back on unnecessary expenses and try to make ends meet. Dad's money covers my tuition and our living expenses. I started part-time jobs, but it's still not enough. Selling the house seems inevitable. Despite being so close to graduating, I might have to drop out. And that breaks my heart because I've worked incredibly hard to get this far. That's a tough situation. But remember what you said about not wanting to fail like your big sis? Perhaps it's time to reconsider that statement. I'm sorry. Please find it in your heart to forgive me. I don't want to give up on my dreams because of financial constraints. Do you know how hard I've worked? I'm even job hunting now. It's my top priority. You have indeed worked hard up until now. I suppose you'll have to put even more effort into your job and find ways to earn more money. Or perhaps consider moving to a more affordable apartment. You don't necessarily need that fancy house to focus on your studies. No, that's terrible. Besides, selling the house won't solve everything. We'd end up in debt and I can't imagine living a life burdened by constant debt. Well, you reap what you sow. Good luck trying to recover from the financial strain. And just so you know, since you were curious about my earnings, I probably make more in a month than all of you combined can scrape together in a year. So think about that while you toil away every day. You don't have to rub it in. Please, big sis, just this once help us out. We'll work hard and pay you back, I promise. We're only asking for this one favor. Let me think about it. Nope. What? Even after begging so much? Your family is suffering and you're going to sit back and watch? Okay, let me reconsider. Nope. Even if I were to give you the money, there's no guarantee you'd pay me back. I know your nature well enough to suspect you'd conveniently forget about the debt, considering how much I earn. I know who you are, sis. So my answer remains no. I can't believe you'd say that. We're family, right? How can you think of us this way? That sounds quite familiar. If I recall correctly, I said something similar when you were kicking me out. My words didn't mean much to you then. I have no reason to help any of you. Deal with your troubles yourselves. Oh, come on. I'm so sorry. We shouldn't have treated you that way. Please don't do this. I want to finish school and not let my dreams slip away. After some time, my family continued to pester and demand money from me. But I had no reason to do so. It was their problem, and they needed to figure it out on their own. Unable to bear the situation any longer, I cut off all contact with them and moved to a different apartment that they don't know. My family sank into debt and they had to sell their house and move into a small, rundown home. 
but it still wasn't enough for them to make ends meet. My younger sister, unable to afford her education, had to drop out and work at a nearby supermarket. They went from one hardship to another, and it seemed like there was no end in sight. I hope they can overcome their difficulties soon, but of course I won't be helping them. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and hit the subscribe button below.